increasingly, you have people claiming that they started with a hypothesis when they didn't, and they write it into the paper, and it's just a lie. Well, there are two. Well, no, there are two levels of this lie. Okay, one is they actually observed something in data, and they claimed they came up with a hypothesis second, and then they claimed that the hypothesis yes. preceded the collection of data. That is invalid. That is not a scientific test. It is an observation. Yes, it's not a scientific test. But right? the idea that they test a hypothesis is untrue. Is untrue, and therefore yes. it's actually fraudulent. Okay. Yes. But then there's a second level of fraud. I was just using the word lie. Right. Well, no, but there's a second level of fraud (laughs) that is also rampant here. Yeah. And that is the conclusion preceded any of it, right? And so the point is, it's not even an observation. So we wouldn't even be, we, we wouldn't, this paper wouldn't exist had work been done that somehow falsified the cherished conclusion that they right. began Right, the with. conclusion started, and there are a dozen ways to get to it. You can run enough experiments that eventually one will give you a spurious result that matches your conclusion, and you'll publish that one. Yeah. You could have no correlation whatsoever. You can run 20 experiments and one of them comes up statistically significant just because mathematically that's likely to be the case. Sure. And you publish that one. There are lots of ways it can happen. But the basic point is if the- if And everything everything about the culture of modern science uh, pushes a person towards that, even if they are completely honorable, right? If you do 10 experiments and nine of them come out negative, um, it's very hard to get those published. Yeah. Now, I will point out lots of people- It's hard to get the negative ones published. The, Lots of people who on an average day are good at this kind of thinking have screwed it up with COVID, right? And XKCD is going to be a prime example Mm. here. I'm very disappointed in XKCD and what it was unable to detect in in the shenanigans that were going on. But if you go back far enough in XKCD... The green jelly beans? Yeah, the green jelly bean uh, cartoon. Describe it. Uh, So basically the idea is... um, you've got a bunch of different hypothesis tests. Somebody is running the test at the various different colors of, what were they? Were they M&Ms? They're jelly beans. Jelly beans, right. Um, uh, Are related to something. Did you find it? I did, but it's long, so it's not going to show on my screen. So what is the test against? What what is the the thing that is So you can show my screen, Zach, although you can't see all of it. Jelly beans cause acne. Scientists investigate. But we're, God, it's so small. Um, But we're, Playing Minecraft, fine. We found no link between jelly beans and acne. P greater than 0.05. That settles that. I hear it's only a certain color that causes it. Scientists, but Minecraft. We found no link between purple jelly beans and acne. P greater than 0.05. We found no link between brown jelly beans and acne, etc., etc. No link between you know pink, blue, teal, salmon, red. And okay, it goes on and on and on and on. Um, we found a link between green jelly beans and acne, P less than 0.05. Whoa. And then they go on. And then and then we see, you know, they tested whatever that's going to be, 25 colors, yeah. right? News, green jelly beans linked to acne, 95% confidence, only 5% chance of coincidence. So the point and, is. You know, the point, yeah, the point is they did, <laughs> they did 20 tests. The point is statistically significant means something that people don't understand what it means. And what it means is it is a tolerable level of risk that something, and uh, our friend Dr. Rolligator is going to once again chastise me um, over a subtlety buried in here. But, um, but the point is it is a tolerable level of risk that the pattern that you have observed is not the result of anything other than sampling error. Right? And the point is, if you set that number to zero, you can't do the science. You have to accept some tiny risk that randomness will fool you. And the point is, if you do a bunch of tests and there's nothing to be found, some of those tests will come up positive because of this sampling error issue. So now you're going to take me to well, test. Well, I don't, I don't think it's sampling error, but I don't think we want to get into the weeds here. I don't think sampling error is, is, it's, is the it's, issue here. It's sampling error in the sense that you have a non-pattern, and if you grab a bunch of handfuls of data, some of them will be skewed because every handful is non-random, or like is m- random, and there's meta sam- It's like, okay, meta sampling error. I believe it is technically, okay. technically sampling error. But anyway, the, the point okay. is... Data set. Oh, okay. um, the point is... We have a test, a hypothesis test on the table, a de facto hypothesis test about what you and I have been struggling with over the entirety of all of these live streams, over all of our public work, trying to sort out what is and isn't going on with COVID and our response to it, Yep. right? Our point has been, this appears to be conclusion driven. Yes. Okay. 
This appears to have started with its conclusion, and then the facts are being bent in order to lead us to that conclusion, rather than proceeding from the evidence to see where it takes us, right? Yep. That is not only unscientific, it is the inverse of scientific. It yes. is not even open to discovery, right? Now, that is a terrible accusation, right? If that is true, it says utterly dire things about our system, which we have said, hey, mm -hmm. this is utterly dire. And the point is, follow Omicron, the conclusions, follow the anti-science, follow the Pied Piper. Omicron is the test of this hypothesis. Right? Mm -hmm. we, did, we did not see Omicron coming, but the point is, we have been delivered something that is so radically different from the variants that preceded it in terms of its consequence and risk that yeah. you would expect policy to pivot radically in yes. the aftermath of its emergence. And it didn't pivot. What happened is you saw, A, exactly the same scare tactics, right? Yes. When Omicron showed up, it was like, scary new variant Omicron, right? When, in fact, there were indications from the beginning that the the, the response to it should be the opposite. Actually, uh, maybe this one has a much lower rate of death, which implies a much lower rate of everything that, you know, puts people at risk of death. And so the fact that we are being told that, of course... You know, scientists say that the response to COVID, uh, to Omicron, is that you should go get your booster, right, is evidence that the conclusion started. The booster was the point, and then the circumstances are being um, presented in such a way as, so as to suggest that same conclusion still follows. And that is a very unsettling thing, and I don't pretend to know uh, how you're supposed to grapple with that discovery that you've been through two years of insanity when, uh, and you've been told that the insanity you were being dragged through was because scientists had figured stuff out when in fact it turns out that what they were doing was completely unscientific and conclusion driven from the beginning, but that does appear to be the case. Well, in some, I think, you know, as, I, as I've been saying for many months now, I'm really trying to figure out what's in the heads of the of the true believers here. And I think one of the things that you know the, the true believers, and, and, you know, and some of the some of the true believers don't believe all of it anymore. You know, they're seeing cracks in the in the public narrative, but they still they still believe some of it. Like you know, mo most of the people who are now seeking this middle ground and um, saying, "Okay, enough already," still believe fervently with a like a religion like fervor in, for instance, the vaccines. And uh, you know, I, I see people saying things like, "I was, I, I was so relieved. I cried tears of joy the day I got my first vaccine, COVID vaccine." And I think, "Wow, you know, how how do you, how would you, sort of back away from that edge? Then, how how would you recover your own sense of sort of rationality and dispassionate analysis, if?" You were that emotional. If you believed the story to such a degree that at the point that it was announced that there would be vaccines at some point and then it was still months away and you were promised and promised and promised as soon as you get this and as soon as enough of your fellow people get it, then you get your life back. And you believed to such a degree that you were, you know, and you were also scared. You were, you're going to get your life back, both in terms of being able to do all the things, but also um, you don't have to be scared about dying anymore. And you get it, and then it turns out, well, it doesn't really reduce transmission, and it's not really that effective, and um, and it's not even all that safe, and all of these things. And you you cannot, you cannot back away from really the emotional conclusion that has now been instantiated in your memory as i remember i remember the promise i remember being promised and then having it delivered and it came to me and here i am and who is to blame for this not working out ah it's the dirty unvaccinated that's who is to blame here that is who we shall blame and a lot of the people who are seeking a middle ground now aren't actively aren't actively blaming the unvaccinated, but they are also in no way, as far as I've seen, actively investigating their own, frankly, misguided, having been vastly manipulated by media narratives, emotional response that got them to go all in on being excited and relieved and overjoyed at getting that job. Yeah. And so they become, in some sense, addicted to the relief, 
And the point is they will they will reinvigorate the story even as it comes apart in front of them in order to return to that state of feeling like they had figured it out and other people were wrong and you know and relief was in sight. Yeah. And you know it's 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 sloppy thinking at, in the extreme and it's it's a disaster. Um, you know people would have been much better off with uh, frankly simple advice about how to you know deal with their vitamin D deficiency. 